Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve 3sum leak code number 15. Now I've actually made a video about 3sum in the past, but that solution uses a hash map and there's actually a better solution than that. So we're given an integer array of nums and we want to return all the triplets, that is nums at i, nums at j, and nums at k, such that i is not j, i is not k, and j is not k, meaning that they're all three different indices and the sum of those three values add up to zero. Also, the solution set must not contain duplicate triplets. Now they actually do have to specify this case here because if we look at this example we can see negative 1, negative 1, and 2. So that works because these two are actually different negative 1s. They're different indices. They're different locations in the array. And negative 1, 0, and 1 also do as well. Now the reason we need to specify must not contain duplicate triplets is because you could have in a different order say 2, negative 1, and negative 1. Those are still three different numbers that sum up to the target but it's just a different different permutation or a different arrangement of these numbers. So it says that again, notice that the order of the output and the order of the triplets does not matter. Okay, so here's our array and notice it is sorted in increasing order. Now you're not actually guaranteed that it is sorted, but basically the first thing you would do here is just sort it in place. So we're going to run that first. Now the reason we want to do that is because if you fix say an index i here, well then we basically have an offset of minus three. So it's basically like we're trying to get the sum of zero and now we're stuck in an offset of minus three. Well, that tells us we need two other numbers, say a position j and a position k, that are going to sum up to positive three, because then together with our offset of negative three and our other positive three, then we'll have a sum of zero. Now, instead of just calling these j and k, which are generic variable names, we're going to call them low and high, basically because we're going to do a two-pointer squeeze technique. So now with this offset of negative three, we're basically going to do a squeeze through this region here, where low is is going to increase this way and high is going to decrement this way. So we have our offset of minus three from i and then from low we have another minus three and from high we have a positive three. This is going to equal negative three and that sum is too small. We're looking for a sum of zero. So we need to try and make our sum bigger. To make our sum bigger, well it's sorted. So we can actually guarantee that if we move high to the left, that's the wrong thing to do because that would make our sum smaller. If we move low to the right, that's guaranteed to make our sum a little bit bigger. Actually, it's not because if you had another minus three in this position, well, then this wouldn't actually change it at all. And so that wouldn't be very helpful. But luckily, this is a negative two. So this will make our sum minus three and then minus two and positive three. That's a little bit better. That's going to be a sum of negative two. We need to keep this going here. So we'll move low over a little bit. That's going to make it a sum of minus one. We're really close here. And then when we increment low again, low is now zero. We have minus minus three and positive three. So we get our total sum here of zero. So that tells us that if we're keeping track of our answer here, I'll just call it ANS. Well, then our first solution is going to be in whatever order you want. It really doesn't matter. Negative three and zero and three. So that is one solution we have. We want to keep our offset at minus three because we might find other solutions here with our other two numbers, but we found one with these three numbers. Well, we are keeping our offset the same here, but now zero and three, we do not want to use either of zero and three again. Think about it. If we could use zero, well then what other number would we be looking for? We'd be looking for three. That's the only other thing that works. Conversely, if you kept the three, well then the only other number that works is zero. So what that tells us, if say for example, these were zeros and this was a three, well then you don't want to use any of these zeros and you don't want to use this three. We want to move low and high over, but we do not want to keep them on the same numbers. So we want to move them over until there's new numbers, Okay, that's already a new number. And this also is going to be a new number as well. Okay, so we actually found another solution there because we have minus three and we have one and two. So that's another solution. We'll move these over until they're new numbers. That is a two, that's fine. And then we'll move high over until it's not a two. Oh, well here, they're now marked at the same number. So this is actually the point where you would use a new offset here. Once we're pointed at the same number, you need three different numbers. So that's where we're going to stop this. We're going to move over our offset of i. And another very important thing happens, which is that we are starting with an offset of minus three. You do not want that. We already had the ones that have an offset of minus three. We found these two solutions there. So the same deal here, when i moves over, you want it to start on a new number 
number, okay? So it found a new number of minus two. Let's try and find the solutions with minus two. So we start low at here and we start high right here. Okay, so we have an offset of minus two. We are subtracting a one and we are adding a three. There you go. That is another solution, negative two, negative one and three. So we can add that to our solution here again in whatever order. When we find an answer, we want to move low and high over in ways so that they're different numbers. So we move low over. Okay, that's a new number. We move high over. That's also a new number. And interestingly, this is actually a solution as well. Negative two and zero and two. That is going to be a new one. So we can have that here. Negative two, zero and two. Okay, we found a new solution. We move this over until they're different. That is different. Okay, they are now equal to each other. This is where we reset. So we move over I. We can see it has a new number. So that's okay. We reset low and high. So we have an offset of minus one. We have low at zero, high at three. That sum is too big. That's a sum of positive two. So when the sum is too big, we want to try and make it smaller. If we move this over, we're closer. We're now at negative one and zero and two. That's going to make a sum of positive one. So it's a little too big. Now we move this over and it was the same number as previously. So we kind of know that this is going to be wrong. However, since we didn't find a solution on the previous one, this is actually kind of okay. You'll kind of just run through this and quickly check that this still doesn't work. So this still doesn't work. We would move over high. We can see we have another solution here, which is going to be negative one, zero, and one. They're going to move over and basically move past each other. And so we are going to reset our offset. So this is going to be an offset of just zero. We would have high right here. We would have low here. Okay, so this is obviously way too big. This is a sum of four. Try to make it smaller. Still way too big. Still way too big. Still too big. We found nothing there. Okay, we move I over. And notice here, we can actually immediately break break and conclude there's nothing left. If our offset is at a positive number, well then we kind of need negative numbers to get down to zero. If you have positive one, you need to subtract stuff to get closer to zero. And having low and high over here, these are not going to give you negative numbers because if this one's positive and these ones are going to be strictly greater than that, then your whole sum is going to be positive. So when I, your offset index, gets positive, you can definitely conclude there's nothing left because everything would just be a huge positive sum. Okay, so let's think about time complexity here. Well, I I is just going through the array. You can think about I as a for loop going through the array. And for each of its positions where it's an offset, we have basically a while loop over low and high. So I is going to have basically n positions. And for each of those, low and high are going to be O of n themselves because they're going to squeeze through each other. And so the time complexity of this whole thing is going to be basically a for loop with a while loop inside of it. So that's going to be O of n squared. And the space complexity of this, well, other than the solution space we're storing, we're not really taking up any space. However, what's kind of interesting is by sorting this thing, in most programming languages, you're actually going to have a space complexity of O of n in that sort. Even though you can sort in place, the most efficient way to sort, this is kind of an interesting discussion, and I'm just kind of going to leave this out of it. So because of that, the space complexity is actually probably going to be O of n, although this might actually be language dependent. Depending on the implementation, you can probably do this in constant space by sorting it in in place. Okay, so let's code this up. Okay, so then as we saw, we're going to sort the numbers. We can do that in place with nums.sort, and we'll get n is equal to the length of the numbers. Now we'll build up an answer array, so we'll just call that answer as an empty list, and then we'll iterate through the array. So for i in the range of n, this is going to be that first starting number. Okay, then if nums at i is bigger than zero, so if the value at our first index is positive, well then our other two indices, low and high, they will be bigger than i, and so they'll also be at positive numbers. That's just going to generate a totally positive sum. And in that case, we're actually ready to break out of the loop because it's just going to get more and more positive as i increments through the array. Okay, then we also have another optimization here. Otherwise, if i is greater than zero, we just ask that to check this safely and nums at i is equal to nums at i minus one. So if nums at i is the same value as it just was, well, then we're starting with the same value. And if we carry on with this, this is just going to generate duplicate solutions. So in this case, we just want to continue, which will restart the loop and increment i. Then outside of this, we're ready to try and do some checks with low and high. So we'll set those up. Low and high are equal to low is going to be i plus one, and high is going to be at the 
end of the array at n minus 1. Then while low is less than high, we want to do that kind of squeeze technique. So we'll get our current sum is equal to the nums at the three indices. So nums at i plus nums at low plus nums at high. Now if the sum is equal to 0, okay, that's great. We found a solution. So we just want to answer dot append the list of nums at i, nums at low, and nums at high. So low will increase to low plus 1, and high will decrease to high minus 1. And we need to make sure that they did not fall on the same values here. So while low is less than high, we still need to make sure that those are in bounds there. And we have that nums at low is equal to nums at low minus 1. So again, while nums at low is equal to the same value as it was previously, we don't want to use the same number. So we'll just set low to be going up by 1. And basically the same condition here, but for high, we need to make sure it's not on the same value. So we still need that condition. And we need while nums at high is equal to nums at high plus 1. So since high moved over to the left, we need to make sure that nums at high is not equal to the value it was on the right. We will do high is going to go down by 1. Okay, then outside of that, it's actually pretty simple. It's just otherwise, if the sum is less than 0, we just need a higher number for low to get a bigger sum. So low is going to go up by 1. Otherwise, our sum is too big, and so we need to high minus equals 1. That will decrease. Okay, so outside of that, we really just need to return our answer at the end of this loop here. If we are to run that, we'll see it will work, and it will also pass our test cases very quickly. Okay, guys, drop a like if you found this helpful. I hope it was, and have a great day. Bye-bye.